Oh my God, that was quick though. <laughs> I know, it's like immediately you're live. <laughs> I know, okay, we're live. Let me just tweet about it real quick. I, I feel know. like every single time I go live, it takes about like a minute. Yes. So that was instantaneous. Yeah, my Wi Fi is coming through today. I love that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just tweet with this real quick. I yes, hope I people are enjoying. Just spam the timeline a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So let me just check that we're live because. Oh my God, Jalisa, hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Honestly, this YouTube live stream thing throws me off because I know this is lagged for the audience like a minute or two. Uh huh. So sometimes comments take a while to get in, and I'm like, oh my God, people, please join. I don't want to talk to myself. <laughs> well, hi, hi everyone. everyone. How's everyone doing? I hope you all have your coffee or your food or your snacks, or if you're just joining just to join, thank you. I wish I had coffee. I wish I had takeout. I made a salad. I cannot relate. This is embarrassing. Oh, I know it's so jealous. McDonald's. <laughs> I almost never do this. I promise. I eat healthy, but today was just one of those days. You know. It's okay. Like I said, I had a whopper earlier, so we're all you know balanced. It's yeah. a balancing act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. Mm -hmm. Just got my iced coffee Ooh. and Doritos. Yes. Wait, Honestly, what's the Doritos? Because that's important. <laughs> you know which ones I love? I don't even know what they're called. The purple ones. Thank you. Those Thank are you. bomb. The spicy but... sweet Doritos are the best. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, Thank good you evening. You're doing this kind of to wind down the night. But yeah, I had iced coffee during Molly's sprint. So there is no way that I'm going to have coffee at 6 p.m. because your girl will not sleep if she does. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> that How is like some next level nacho. Yeah. Coffee. How do you do that, though? Like, do you put them in, like, the microwave? Does that make them soggy? I yeah, make it because I make, like, like, we used to call them, like, hobo nachos as a kid where you just do like tortilla chips and then just shredded cheese in the microwave. Yeah. It would get soggy, but melting I, monster cheese. You know what? I need, I need to know how this happens because that sounds straight up incredible. Yes. But okay. I have all my microwave. <gasps> yes. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think every reference of my mom's I just tie it in with Lorelai and it's just very <laughs> on brand but my mom got rid of our microwave like months ago because mm. she's like I don't like microwaves they give you cancer I'm not having any of that in my house so now you know we prep meals sometimes and it defeats the entire point of you know prepping your meal because I'm just turning on the stove to heat it up so true, true. So it, you know, I thought about getting rid of my microwave. So that is interesting. So if it's, yeah. it's like more of a hassle to heat it up in the oven, I felt like it would be okay. I mean, if you want to like wash a lot of dishes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I if, if, you, if you have like a dishwasher, go at it. But if you don't and you wash everything by hand, which is what we do, do not recommend. Because if you're heating up like rice and like your proteins and whatever, it's nah. Unless you're like me, I just heat up everything in one pan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That's fine. I, I do I the mean, same. I like heat up anything like that. I mean, what I, my theory is, it's all gonna get mixed up in there anyway, you know? So right. why don't we all just heat that's it fine. up together? That's totally fine. So that's just my chaos you know representing oh got my snacks on deck oh open the one yeah. oh, that's gonna make me do that and i don't know if i should go do that honestly i i finished half a bottle of wine which was all that was left mm -hmm. on on friday because mm -hmm. there was no way i was finishing crush without drinking we can't even talk about crush on this live like we can't even do it, no, 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 it. No. i've heard all the comments 
<laughs> no, it's not. It's not today's subject. I'm like mentally preparing myself. But I'm I'm expecting them texts to make is all I'm saying. Oh yeah, y'all about to make me go get get it. Just I know. That's go get them. Like I have the uh, purple Doritos. Like you're about to make me go grab some. I mean, and you're wine you, now. You just eat a salad, man. <laughs> I know. I'm it's so balanced. It's balanced. It's balanced, like a you know? nice, like a healthy one, but I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Maybe I'll get some wine and Doritos as well. Honestly, if we're here for like two hours, you we're might as well eat them. it. We're going to need it. Okay. I don't know how ready I am for this. I have like a lot of thoughts on the last um, scene. I feel like Jaleesa is just laughing. Jaleesa is always saying, Jaleesa is always saying like, Mel, you cracked me up. And I'm like, but I'm not even funny, but like, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> like, I'll take it. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't even know where to start. I'm going to just pop in the banner right here. Um, and you know what? You were, we're just chat with us. Chat with us. Is this, is, is this it? Is this nothing's happened? There it is. <laughs> this is it. It, it, it looks like chat with US. That's wrong. Oh, it does. The S needs to come. <laughs> Let me just take that out and create another one. How terrifying. Chat with us. Like that was so <laughs> intense. <laughs> chat with us. Don't chat in the comments. Oh my chat god. Chat with us. That's no, horrible. Please. I'm already, my dogs are already here just like wanting to be on the live stream. Oh my God. I know my cat is, he'll be coming in. He's been whining. I I love her, but uh, they demand too much attention. And since I was on Molly's live stream, they're like, give it to me. Caress me. Yeah, they're like, come on. Yeah. They're like, give something to me. Hey, chat with the United Hello. States. Mm. Like, we don't wanna. I'm in no. it. We need it. <laughs> don't get me started, Jalisa, because <laughs> I will go off, okay? <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, let's chat because I think mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot of thoughts, but I think Mick and I are on the same page about them. Yeah. Um I'm but first sure. of all, first of all, if if you're if you've never watched Mick, just be before I forget. <laughs> If you have never been on Mick's channel, if you've never watched her videos, all her links are down below. Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, YouTube, everything. So you can go don't follow her. her. They don't use it. <laughs> because it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It, no. Okay. Just go follow her. It's what she deserves. She's Thank making all that content. And yeah. Such a cute dog. Oh, honestly, yes. Yes. Um, that's exactly what we say, especially when her hair starts getting longer. My mom's just like, she looks like we got her from the streets. And I love her anyway. It's fine. She's a cutie. And she's she's quite old, too. She's like eight years old. So, you know what? She's, she's been here for a long time. We love yes. her. But anyway, um, okay, Mick. If you want to start with your general thoughts, like how do you feel about these three episodes? Episodes four through six. Yeah, I think we talked about it. Like the first three episodes are amazing because you're jumping back into this world. It's super nostalgic and you get really excited about it. And then episodes four, five, and six, they aren't boring because we love these characters per se, but it does feel a little more all over the map. Whereas episodes one, two, and three, we had like, a clear storyline going on yeah so. i think i think because episodes one two and three are what introduces us to this world mm -hmm. i think there's a clear distinction between like plot beats right and then in these three episodes i feel like they just model together i feel like you can't really at least i for me it was hard to really see a distinction between what was happening with plot beats and so I think I fangirled a little bit more than I took away like technical points yeah. um, just because we see more of those characters mm -hmm. that I personally love. And I was just like, oh my God, yes, give it to me. But and some that I hate. And some that I hate. But let me just say, I was not happy with no Emily on episode four because I needed me some Emily on episode four. Yes. Yes. And I was just like, where is she? Why is she not here? But then we start episode five with her, so it's fine. 
Yes, I have. Yeah, I think I have a lot more like fangirly chat with us comments than I do like writer takeaways, but that's okay. We can, we can go right into it with episode four. Yeah. Um, if you have like any great first note, mine is already all over the map, so I can already tell this is about to be. <laughs> so my my first thing that I wrote down is Mr. Medina dot dot dot. <laughs> And it's Wait, what are your thoughts about Mr. Medina? It's just, I don't, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't, I don't vibe do. it. But here's the thing. I feel like I if do. it would have been any other person on earth, I would have been fine with it. But he's Rory's teacher. I know, but that's what like creates the drama. No, no he was so charming. He was like a little oh my, oh my god, no. He'd be flirting with Lorelai in that parent teacher conference. Yeah, um, I was like, okay. No. I'm not. So if <laughs> please, this, is, this is our first disagreement, you know? I know. I think this is our first disagreement. Yeah, and it's live, so we love it. But I don't like the fact that, and I mean, I I do like that Laura like questioned it though. She was like, I don't think we should do yeah. this. Like yeah. you're Rory's teacher, but to go ahead and like go out on a date, I don't, I, because I, I'm putting myself on Rory's shoes and I just don't know right. how much I would like that. But I think Laura still does have that. Like that was really the internal conflict yeah. for episode five. I'm pretty sure. Hi. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Yeah, I, like, I, I see Laura. someone pop up. <laughs> <laughs> no, at least like Lorelai did have like that in, internal conflict. I think it was all in episode five is when he yeah. actually asks her out. So at least I like that she didn't just have no disregard. Yeah. For it. And I had some drama. Plus, this is the first time we actually like we had a hint of like Lorelai kind of dating in episode one, two, and three. And then this is like her actually diving into it. So I'm excited. Yeah, my one comment was, I actually really liked Max. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. See, I know I do I do cat over the all's episodes. Yes, you do. Yes. 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 But, but you can you can stay. Don't me open up. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I, I don't hate you. Yeah, honestly, I totally get it. I feel like it's iconic, but a lot of people mm -hmm. haven't watched it, and that's totally fine. I see why. Yeah, I totally see yeah. why. But you know what? What a better time to start than right now is what I'm saying. It's a cozy show. Yes, thank you. I mean, I agree, but for like the viewer in me, for the drama that I love, yeah. I want it. I love it. I mean, it serves for conflict, it. but I just, mm -hmm. oh my God, it's like weird. Like, could you imagine like being at home, like 16 years old and suddenly seeing your like literature teacher walk through your door? To no, take no, I would hate it. I would die. I would like die. that. That's what I'm saying. I just mm, no. But as a viewer, like we have to. Yeah. See, look, we're making everybody watch again more girls. It's, it's happening. Everyone needs to watch it. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree that I, like parents and teachers dating like is definitely a no. But again, like in a show, oh no. He was. He was yeah. Kind of great. Yeah. I just. I don't. I don't. Mm. <laughs> I, I, just, I just think here's where my line of thought goes. I just feel like Lorelai, I mean, he's cute and everything, right? But I yeah. think, I think Lorelai is just looking for someone to love her. Right. And, and I, I feel like this storyline starts to come into play. Yeah. And I don't, I, I've always had this thought with Max that I just don't know if she ever said yes because she wanted to or just because there's some deeper yearning inside of her that she just wants somebody to accept her for who she is. No, that's it. Because you even see that in, again, I think it's episode five now where she's doing the internal conflict and she's already very on the fence and she does the sneaky like, if you want to come to the coffee shop at 412, I'll be here. Yeah. You can show up and I won't say no. But then when she talks to Suki and when she talks to like the other townspeople, she does, I think, have that exact line. Like, I just want someone to accept me for all of my flaws. But I think this is like great building blocks for what we know is going to happen down the line 
with another character on the show. So I like, yeah, probably morally not great for parents to teach to date your kids' teachers. But I think it's really important to like show this first relationship for Lorelai because she matures so much throughout the whole show. Yeah. Even though she's the adult we talked about in episode one, where like she's still very like more, I don't want to say she's childish because I don't think she is. She just just no. really connected with Rory and more living through Rory in some ways. And so I think this relationship starts to, I don't know, grow her maturity and get her kind of more out of Rory's life and into her own life. Yeah, I, I totally agree with, with that character development because in episode four, we see Lorelai, I think it's in the kitchen of the Independence Inn. And mm -hmm. she's like, we are young and hot women. Let's go out. Let's party. And she's saying that to Rory and Suki. So right. you can definitely tell that she's trying to compensate for those years that she lost when she got Rory. Mm -hmm. And and that's totally normal. And again, that's, that's one aspect that I really enjoy about the show is that that representation of Lorelai's level of maturity is really great. Because again, yeah. I've seen it happen firsthand with my mom and still to this day, like she's 42. Again, she had me when she was 22. And she's like, let me go to the club with my friends. Let me have a cup of wine. Like, we are hot, we're young, again, compensating. And I love that we get to see that. Right. Watching the show for the first time. Oh my Yay. God, thank you for joining us then. I agree about it. it's the perfect amount of like, a little bit of drama, but very wholesome. Yeah, I agree. What do y'all think about the Netflix one? Oh, I know, I know Mick has thoughts. I think we all have thoughts. I do. It's really interesting too, because like that, the Netflix series that came out, it was a continuation of the show. And so I think as someone who watched Gilmore Girls like years ago and would rewatch it like almost every year, I was kind of pumped because I was like, we're going to go back to Stars Hollow. It's going to be them older. Um did it live up to expectations? No, I think a lot of fans were upset with how it ended. But also, also, the reader in me actually loved how it ended because I am, unpopular opinion, the type of reader who doesn't need like a neatly wrapped up ending for a story. And that's how this ended. So I think a lot of people were freaking out because that's not as normal in television as it yeah. is for books so people are unhappy with the ending but i i really liked it's the emily it's the emily thing for me her storyline and the netflix continuation was perfect so i was pretty happy with it but yeah there's a lot of nitty-gritty thoughts <laughs> no yeah i agree with everything mick said um but i think we can't go more in depth than that <laughs> i know especially because there's so many people right now who haven't like i, I know it. i don't want to ruin things for you i know because it's so spoilery. Cool. like it's super spoilery yes um but yeah uh we'll just have to see when we get there <laughs> yes we'll see when we get there we'll, we'll see when we get there we'll cross that bridge when we get there um okay. but i my next note is just Druella. i oh my god my dogs are going crazy again I'm they just lose the play at the worst times look at them. they're growling at each other and just like running back and forth oh my god so nala nala has a toy and chloe never plays with it so when she does nala's like give it back to me like that's not yours that's so funny so if y'all hear a growling, that's just what's happening. <laughs> it's the dogs. Yeah, it's the dogs. But I just, I love Drella and I wish we would have gotten more of her. And maybe it's just my Lizzie McGuire fangirl side that I just love that actress so much. Yes. They're literally going at each other. Oh my God. I know, and my cat's yelling at the door. So I'm gonna actually just let my cat in. Oh my God, let me just. Oh my I know God. our animals are going crazy. We'll see if he comes in. I just opened the door. Um, but to answer Cheyenne's comment, the yes, Gilmore Girls is on Netflix. It's Gilmore yeah. Girls Year in the Life is the like continuation. So just make sure you start with only the Gilmore Girls one, not Year in the Life. No, if you start with Year in the Life, that Whoa. I can't even imagine. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Whoa. No, no, no. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> the chaos literally these dogs are a representation of my brain and i just they're going at each other i'm so sorry y'all <laughs> anyway um i also love that we got a lot of sookie 
finally. Yes. Because in those first good. three episodes, like, she's there, but not really there. So I just love the fact that we finally get, like, a little bit more of who Suki is and how she behaves. Because she's a really big part of the show. Yeah, she is. And I think even watching episodes one through three, I was surprised that she wasn't super involved but again knowing how tv shows kind of start to unravel they kind of keep those characters open like is she going to be a part of like a big part of the show or is she not so i'm sure that's probably what happened yeah i also love seeing megan mccarthy in this character what's there's my cat um what's funny is that i'm gonna open up the window um <laughs> Megan McCarthy is like so famous now and known for these super funny roles. Hi guys. Hi. Moki is living his best life right now. Just always wants to be outside. I'm like, you're an indoor cat. No. Awesome. That's the way it should be. Yes. But yeah. Megan McCarthy is like known for like these funny roles, like in Bridesmaids now and all this other stuff. But I always knew her as Suki first. Yeah. So I that's like a really bit like interesting contrast. And for the people who are going to start Gilmore Girls, it's going to be super interesting, I think, to see her play Suki if you're used to her like funnier roles now. Oh my God, he's meowing. My heart. <laughs> I know. He's so talkative. He's such a little baby. But yeah, I also just seeing Suki in these first six episodes hit me so hard. Because she's also, like, she grows so much. Like, she matures yeah. so much. She starts as this really, like, aloof. Just, just she's in her own world. I know. She really is. And this, like, she's, like, being four. salt and, like, banging everything. She's, like, just doing the most, but in the most chaotic way. Yes. I think that's why she's one of my favorite characters, too. Just because she's so wholesome. It's, like, protect Suki at all costs. I know. And, like... Finally, though, this is how we kind of said before, like episode four, five, and six have some subplots going. So we finally have Suki introduced. She has a little like magic risotto moment. And then, of course, she has the little flirtations with Rip the red guy. <laughs> my little heart when I, oh my I God. When that thing with like the raspberry and whatever else that was, I was like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was like a raspberry and a kumquat that he made. Yeah. And, like brought it to her. I was like, yeah. oh, you guys are so wholesome. So cute. I know. We also get a lot of the scenes from the intro portion in yes. these three episodes. Like I was just like, wait, there's one. There's one. There's one. Like this is the entire intro. Like these first, like these three episodes. Everything. Yeah. And I was there for it. I loved it. One of my next notes is about lane because we get to see more of lane mm -hmm. all of those episodes mm -hmm. which is great and one of <laughs> we get to see her sass which is awesome because it really like complements rory because as we said like rory can sometimes be a little like too vanilla like a little yeah. come on yeah. give us something which then, is, which is curious because lane was raised very traditionally right and Lorelai is not a traditional mom and didn't plant, like raise Rory traditionally, but Rory came out way more traditional, like following the rules. Yeah. Yeah. But I love the, the part where Lane is kind of teasing her about Dean being like, oh, that new kid asked about you. And she was like, I guess he's into brainy chicks. Like, mm. and I was like, oh, Lane agrees with us with what we said last episode. Yes, I still have. Okay, so this later on is going to become, at least for me, a Dean Bash session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I, I ain't having none of it. <laughs> no, me either. No. I'm already yeah. like, get me out of the Dean phase. Yes, her and Jackson's flirting was so cute. We love to see it, honestly. Um, I just have, again, this note. I had it on the first three episodes too, but Luke looks like a baby. I know, he really does look like a baby. He looks like he hasn't eaten in like ages. <laughs> no, that's what also, it makes me, I actually don't know how long they filmed this show for. Seven oh, years. Oh my God, look, that's insane. Yeah, it looks, it looks from so the 2000 to 2007. 
Oh, look at you coming out with the dates, with the facts. <laughs> I, you know, I've been knowing them facts. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. I yeah. think um, my next main comment from episode four was when Lorelai does go into this parent-teacher conference. Mm -hmm. I thought that a really awesome tool that they did again with like symbolism was that she had the B-52 shirt, oh, yeah. a suit jacket going into the teacher like parent conference. And I love like the symbolism that we had with her jackets now. Cause in like episode two, she was wearing like the nice jacket, but like crazy clothes underneath for what yeah. children would expect. And then same with this one. So I thought that was another great way to show like Lord, I does doesn't really belong underneath it all, like in this world. I literally have written down, let me look it up because this <laughs> notion set up be having a yeah, lot. No, don't worry, I have notion like on the left and us yeah. on the right. <laughs> so I'm trying to look it up apparent. Okay, here it is. I like this particular section of the parent teacher conference because if, if I go into book plot beats, Mm -hmm. This is really just the fun and games of it. And we truly get to see the upside down version of that world A in which yeah. Lorelai lives. And she comes in, she's totally like floundering. She's like so out of place. And she's like, oh, so can we come to the test? Like, can, can we attend? Like, it's their first test. It's like monumentary. And they're like, it's just a test. Yeah. She's like, well, yeah, but it's like their first test. And so she comes from like a completely different mindset. And so it truly shows what Lorelai could have been if she had grown up truly in that world. Mm -hmm. And I just, it, ah, my little heart in that section, I was just like, Lorelai. I know. Yeah. I know. And then going into really like Rory studying for this test, one girl has to chill out. She has oh, to yeah. Chill. Oh yeah. I mean, we know that this is how Rory is. She's very studious. But I was like, oh, "Honey, take a break. Like, take a nap. Like, at least she was eating French fries. Thank God, yeah. doing something right while studying." Yeah, but you know what? I think the only reason why Rory is truly doing that is because of Paris. Yeah. Because the way that I like, I think particularly in episodes four through six. We truly get to see, just like with the parent-teacher conference, that upside-down world, mm -hmm. I think Paris is what Rory could have been if she had grown up with, you know, with her grandfather and her grandmother in the picture, full of money and, like, high class and status, because they're basically the same person except that Paris is so much more intense. Right. No, yeah, that's very true. Like, Paris is just kind of Rory and, yeah, just intensified. Yeah. But I did love that after they were studying when um, like Rory tucked Lorelai in and then Lorelai went to like tuck Rory in, but like at the table. And I was like, oh, that's like a good mother daughter moment that they have. Yeah. And that also really represents their relationship because Rory sometimes behaves like the mom too. Yes. I thought that was great to show that. Yeah. And I get that because literally yesterday when I was joining Kristen's live stream, my mom wanted to open all the windows and it was about to rain. And I'm like, mom, all the humidity is going to like come into the apartment. I'm not having any humidity in here. And she's like, oh yeah, I won't close it. Then she goes to her room. She comes back and she's like, why am I listening to you? I'm the mom. <laughs> <laughs> and so watching that just really reminded me of that dynamic. And I, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was really cool to see. And oh, also, oh yeah, go ahead. In that scene in the parent-teacher conference, I just love that scene so much because Max tells her, like, not drinking the coffee is also an option. And Lorelai replies, not in my world. Right. And that is something that Lorelai says several times throughout episodes four and, like, four through six. She's like, mm -hmm. not in your world, not in my world. And she's creating that very clear distinction between world A and world B. And I like that. Because yeah. in all in all the muddiness that we see in, in these three episodes, I like that in her scenes, she's, like, creating a distinction. Yeah, and I think, too, that's why I think the relationship with 
Mr. Medina is so interesting because it really is trying to pull Dorlai into world B. And I think that's even more she's hesitant as well. Like, this is not my thing. You are yeah. not my thing. Yeah. You should honestly see my notes because I was just... With episode four, I think episode four was cool, but also it's just, again, these three episodes were not like my all-time favorite. But the comments that I was making, I literally <laughs> said, not fading to black, LOL. She really be yes. floundering, y'all. Like, that, those are literally my comments. Yes. Also, can we talk about how uh, Rory drove to school and no one said anything about it? And, and a deer hitting her car? I, I had to take a step back. One, I forgot that that even happened. Yeah. Two. Rory, like, how old is she? She can't drive? She's 16. Right? What? She's 16. She is? I mean, she's 15, about to be 16, because her birthday is episode six. Oh, right. That's true. I was just like, when that happened, I was like, um, I don't know. There was, like, never mention of a license. Like, Rory's never driven before. I thought she was younger than that, so I was, like, freaking out. I was like, why are we giving her the car? Literally, and with so much trust. She's like, take the car. Run, run, take it. And I'm like, why would I ever do that? I know. I like sat up like when I was watching this. I was like, wait a second. Literally, my mom would barely lend me her phone to like look on something, let alone lend me her car when I was 15. And then I think like actually a weird writing thing that happened that I didn't like was I understand that the deer hitting Rory was supposed to obviously like make more tension with her not getting to the test yeah. and then also became like a comedic point because everybody was like you hit a deer and she was like no I got hit by a deer but then them coming back to the scene I was oh, yeah. like I'm yeah. for a big metaphor here and I don't get it <laughs> they're like I need to like get out of the car and look for the deer and it's like why do you need to look for the deer I, like the deer, the deer is fine. The deer hit you and it just ran off. Like it's fine. I know. In my notes, I was like, "Are they trying to just show that like Rory cares about animals?" I was like, "I don't understand." Like as a writer, I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Yeah, like what? What does this serve? Yeah, yeah that was like a weird plot point to go back to. But I agree. I agree, and that's why again, it just felt very muddied. Like I just. I was watching and I was like, okay, like I want to take notes. Give me something mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I want to write something down, but I totally agree with you with that scene. I don't know what purpose that served. The only like other note that I really had is um, Rory lashing out at Paris. Yeah. Was great. And what we wanted to see, I think like in episode one, we were like, Rory was so timid before. And I thought this was at least a good writing tool because it showed Rory like completely different than she would normally act in that scenario. Yeah. So you knew something was wrong. Like you knew that she was stressed and tensed out because she would have, normal Rory would have never done that. But also I was dying laughing. I was like, that's hilarious. She, like got in Paris's face and I was like, whoa. whoa. Yeah. I was like, I don't think we see a lot of that throughout the show. So that was good to see. Yeah, I think I wrote something about that. So yeah, the scene where she snaps up Paris. Um, and, and that's what I wrote down. I feel like this is the first time we understand that this could have been Rory if she had grown up high class. Right. Because in that in that scene, I, I was watching and I was like, yo, that's Paris. Like, I feel like that's just Paris, like, snapping at people. Yes. Paris is, like, prone to do that kind of thing. Especially yeah. when things don't go her way. Whereas, like, Rory's not like that. But, yeah, that's, that's a good point. It's, like, mirroring what she could have been. Yeah. Also, I literally wrote, why am I making googly eyes at Tristan? SOS. <laughs> SOS? <laughs> Wait, no, Mel. <laughs> I know. <Get> back. back. <laughs> I know. He, here's the thing, because I know he's supposed to, like, not be likable, but Chad Michael Murray, like, how can I not? I mean, okay, understandable with Chad Michael Murray. Again, we talked about our, um, you know, a Cinderella Cinderella Rose, Rose, yeah. very Duff vibes with Juella yeah. and Tristan, but no, no, he's so bad. And in episode no. six, he's so bad. I know, Mick, I know. Uh, no. I can't help it. Avert your eyes. Go back towards Luke. I can't. Okay. I can't do that. <laughs> that. That I can do. Perfect. 
that I can do, which I think, I don't know which, I don't think it's the first, I don't think it's the fourth episode because there was one reference that I just straight up laughed because it's a show or a movie, I can't remember, that Chat Michael Murray is in. Really? Yeah. And I, and I was like, I'm a, if you want me to jump to it, I can look for it. <laughs> because I was like, yeah, Freaky Friday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's, a, refer that, that's a reference in episode six. Did that come out yet? No. Hmm. That's funny. No. Yeah, Freaky Friday came out, it, 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 it came out in 2002, and, and season one was 2000, so. Okay. Okay. I know. I just, I just I thought it was a, a cute little funny moment. Yeah, those were all the nuts that I had for four. Honestly, same. It's Every just, day, I think, again, Mel, it was the, it's the high school storylines that get me that I'm like, okay. Yeah, like, just get it going. Yeah. And I just, I, the one last note that I have is the name of the episode, The Deer Hunter, which mm -hmm. is a movie and it tells a story of like Vietnam vets who have difficulty adjusting to civilian life. And mm -hmm. so that's just yeah. representative of how Rory is struggling to, you know, adjusting at Chilton. So that, I did that not was, know that. So that's where the deer metaphor comes from then. Yeah. So that was the last note that I had. But beside that, I think that's basically it for episode four in regards to notes because everything else I have is just like pop culture references. And yes, yes, yeah. yes. Still is. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. 100%. Every time I re like watch these earlier episodes, I just want to watch... Um, Oh my gosh, what's Cinderella this? story? Yes, a Cinderella story. Mick, we should do like a Netflix party for this. <laughs> we should. I love that movie so much. It's so dramatic. I love it. That was my childhood. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I even watched the next ones with like Selena Gomez, which I mean, they're not like the best, but Drew Seeley was in those. So, mm -hmm. just saying. Just saying. It was worth watching. Do we want to jump to chat with us for the next episode or wrap up completely like episode four? Ooh, I feel like I don't have a ton of notes for like the rest of the episode. So I feel like I could continue with the notes that I got. Okay. Go into the other segments. Okay. First note I have for episode five. So this is the episode with um, the cat. Yes. Okay. So this is the episode where Cinnamon, the cat, dies and um, it's about that and Maury. <laughs> yes. It's a very dramatic event for the town. So we're back in World A, which again, I feel like I love Stars Hollow more anyway yeah. than World B. But right as we open in episode five, my first one was like, Emily's got jokes. Oh my God. Okay. So the first thing I wrote down was Emily. Yes. Note. She's <laughs> back, and then also, like, she schooled Lorelai on that joke. Like, I thought that was great comedic writing because at first she was like, Oh, Lorelai, like, what are you saying? And Rory's like, Oh, that's a joke. She's like, Oh, it's hard to tell. But then she comes back with her own, like, very intense joke, <laughs> and then she tries to be like, Oh, that was a joke. And Rory loses it. I was losing it. It was so good. Honestly, Emily is just as best as it gets. Yes. Yes. She's still yeah. the best character, hands down. Yeah. I also wrote down, I need more Michelle. <laughs> Honestly. He is this, is this, oh, go ahead. He's just the best. Like, I just love him. Like, the banter and, like, the tension and, like, the comedy. It's just all there with his character. This is the episode where the French people come, right? I think so. <laughs> so yeah, funny. Yes, I think yeah, I have. He, he's just like kill me now. He's like I'm not French. I'm like Michelle, come on. And then he's like bonjour, like just get me out of here. And they're all like, oh my god. And Michelle's like, oh my god, no, like no, I hate this. I love that. Yeah, he's just the funniest. 
See, you're going to be mad because we already talked about this. But like my second note is like Lorelai and Max, the longing. Like I loved it. No. I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to just jump right over that and say, here's something we can agree on. Okay. Not Dean. Get out of here. <laughs> not Dean. Team not Dean. I literally wrote it in all caps with, I can't tell how many exclamation marks, but about 15. Okay. A reasonable amount. Reasonable amount. A reasonable amount. And I just said, he's literally behaving like a stalker, getting on that bus behind her. And the way he's whispering, he's whispering in her ear, like, goodbye, Rory. I'm like, mm -mm, that, that, that doesn't fly with me. And like, I don't know, is it clouded? Because I have already like a hatred because <laughs> <laughs> I was like okay in a rom-com movie if that happened we might think it was like cute but since we already know that Dean like stalks her and we hate him so much we were like get out of here get off that bus you creepy person he didn't even like sit next to her he just sat like behind her and like whispered her in the ear which I was like that's weirder if you oh, no. that's just weirder you made it worse like, if you tell me he yells at her from, like, the other side of, like, the yard or something, but he just sees her and creepily, like, stalks up to her and gets in the buzz, and then he's like, hi, Rory. <laughs> yeah. I ain't, no. <laughs> no. We are not here for Dean. We Ow. really are not. I just, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Jared Padalecki. Like, I love Supernatural, so, like, give it to me. But Dean? Mm -mm. Also, I I know that this might actually shock you. The world, maybe. I've never watched Supernatural. That's fair. That's fair. I feel like it's something I would love. I just also feel like I missed the boat. Because like I love Charmed growing up. Charmed was my show, and I feel like it has the same sort of vibe as Supernatural. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I missed the boat, but fair enough. I started watching it when I was younger because I was watching the Vampire Diaries. And so it was usually yeah. the Vampire Diaries was on and then Supernatural was on. So I just watched it back to back. Mm -hmm. But I get it, though. Yeah. And, and oh. even like the special effects. I mean, <laughs> this last season, those special effects are awful like you're telling me they're wrapping up like after 15 seasons and you cannot invest on special effects well that's how i feel like charmed was though too like i watched charmed growing up and charmed special effects were rough yeah. but I feel like you just like accept that and then you just have to i mean yeah move on yeah but i mean it's it's a cool show <laughs> i think it's better if you watch it like background noise because <laughs> There are some episodes which just get really boring. Yeah. Um, and if one of my closest friends is watching this and she hears me say this, she's going to text me later and kill me. Freak out. Yeah, because she's like the biggest fan of Supernatural. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like it. I love it. But is it a show that I would rewatch in its entirety? No. Good to know. Good to know. I feel like I'd rather just watch Lovecraft Country on okay. HBO instead of Supernatural right okay. now. I've never watched Lovecraft, so. So really? we can agree that we don't like Dean. No, we don't. But can we agree that we're Team Kirk? Oh, yeah, 100%. I absolutely adore Kirk. Yes. Like, when it when he is just not seen at, like, uh, doses, I'm like, yes. Because, I mean, and for people who've watched the show in its entirety, they, like, we know that Kirk is just one of the best characters, like, right. ever. Like, he's just the funniest. I <laughs> love Kirk. It's just thinking about it makes me crack up. And I think that's why, like, I loved this ep like episode so much more because we got a little bit of Kirk. We got a ton of Babs, which... Babs is hilarious. And she's the cutest too. Like she cares so much. I know. And then we also had Miss Patty. And I was like, oh, yes. these are all my favorites. But one thing I wrote was they did Miss Patty dirty with that wig. <laughs> I know. It's just I awful. No, I know. Oh my God. 
oh, you loved, here's the thing. I feel like when you watch it for the first time, you're like, it's cute. But then you go back and it just, it doesn't feel the same. And I think, especially if you, if you read a lot, it just, it's one of those things that maybe comes across better in books. But when you're seeing it like truly, like visually, <laughs> And you're seeing a guy just pop in behind like a 16 year old and like whispering in her ear, like I've been watching you, Rory. That just, I don't, I, I don't, I can't find that cute. <laughs> I know. And I think too, like since watching more of the show, like I'm so team other guys okay. that I will encounter. <laughs> but like I'm just anti team Dean at this point. Yeah. Because I it kept popping up and I was like, no. Bye. Like you dated in high school. Like move on. Okay, let me just private chat you real quick because I need to know. Oh no. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but and I was like, I don't want to like. We can talk, but then I'm like worried about people who haven't seen it who might watch. Yeah, but 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 also like this is this is my brain. Wait, okay, I'm glad that you okay, maybe we'll just we'll just talk a little bit about this. Okay. Because I, I mean do, there's people who've watched the show like in its true. entirety, so true. might as well. I agree that I am first and foremost team Jess. Mm hmm But I am still team Logan. Yeah. But I talked to my friend Sophia about this that she dated both of them at the wrong time yeah which is why they just didn't work out for her and I but like ultimately I'm team Jess I don't know if it's just because he's that brooding literary character and also like Milo like just well I um, mean like Milo's great he was in one of my favorite shows that ended too soon which was Heroes and oh Nick oh my god if I didn't think I could love you even more but I do Heroes that was so good. That was my oh my god. I, and I recently started rewatching it too. So I'm just oh my gosh. I could talk, I could do this about heroes all day. I feel like heroes was such an underrated show. Honestly, it was yes. hashtag save the cheerleader. Oh my god. Yes, 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 yes. But honestly, I agree. I just think Jess was super bad timing. Right. But Logan. Mm, I do feel like it was not the best timing, but I feel like they were the right lessons. Right. That's why I think Logan was really great. And I love Logan as a character down the line because I thought he progressed actually so much. When in the beginning, I was like, oh, you're going to stay like this rich white guy prick the entire time. Yeah. And he doesn't come out of that 100%, but he learns a lot from Rory. And so I respected Logan a lot more towards the end of his storyline. Whereas Jess still had a lot of growing up to do, but like he got his redemption in the extended episodes. Okay, I would just highlight this real quick so we don't go on. Yes. Yes. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so whiny, so whiny. Don't yeah. worry, you're in good company. Mel and I really like to trash Dean on an episode basis, so. <laughs> yeah, I just think and I mean, as we go on, I mean, we'll talk about that even more. But I, my Spanish just coming out without me even thinking, what was that? <laughs> okay. Anyway, but <laughs> that just took me by surprise. Like, what? It's okay. You've done a ton of lives today. You've just been talking a lot. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my brain just be going on autopilot by now. Um, but... I just, the way that Dean was written, it's, mm, and I don't, I, I mean, it, I guess it was intended to come out that way, but still people being Team Dean? No. No. Did I have to Justin Logan? Good. No. no. Good. Very good. I yes. do have like a big, like, it's in all caps in my notes. So this is when we're in the cat funeral, which I love. I think that's great. I love that this show like stars hollow character, like the whole town came together and used it as like a community event to come around and help out Babs and Maury. 
Can we talk about Babs Doorways? The physical comedy that they did there subtly, I had never noticed that before. I was dying. No. This little lady who's married to this tall man. And I was like, oh my God, Maury has to duck every time he goes into a room. Cause that's what everyone was like coming in and like ducking in to the, oh my gosh, I was dying. I thought that was so funny on the writer's parts to have some like good physical comedy in there. Yeah. I'd never noticed that either. But when I saw it, I was like, this house was made for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not no, me. I'm like I five feet. Okay. Like I'm five feet. So I was like, that's my place right there. You know? like, yeah. No, I'm a full foot taller than you. What? Yes. Mick. Oh my God. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tiny. I would have never guessed. See, that's why like booktube is so funny to me because it's so hard to guess people's heights. Yeah. But yeah, I would have never guessed that. Wow. Oh my God. No, I'm the tiniest. Like when I was in school, everyone just, everyone, I was the tiniest. Like I was always placed at the beginning of the line because I was the end. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been, I've been this height since I was like nine. <laughs> I never yeah. grew. Oh my gosh. No, oh yeah, God. I've been this height literally since like middle school, which is terrifying. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I just, Yes, they're hilarious. I also was like, the comedy TV shows, I feel like sometimes don't utilize physical humor as much anymore. Yeah. So I thought this was just a great execution of that. I agree. Also, along the lines of like Miss Patty, not Miss Patty talking about the, you know, frick doodle with Rory and the and Dosi. Oh. My gosh, I have that. That was like one of my best lines, but like try a fruit. They're better than sex. I'm, I'm like, Rory's like 16 and she's never like dated a boy. She's like all naive and innocent with like creepy Dean. And she's also like, like how like really smart on the writer's part because like Rory came in there with like definitely some like lust romance on her mind because she was just like needed to look at Dean. And then of course, Patty corners her and is like, try a fruit, they're better than sex. And she's yeah. like so startled. She's like, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I then. love Miss Patty, honestly. I was just waiting to have more of Miss Patty. And also I have this note right here, not them having clams at Al's Pancake World. <laughs> I know. Also, one, no, two, Rory says in one of the first episodes that Al's Pancake World has the worst food. So why do you then get clams? <laughs> and it's a pancake place. That's I the know. forbidden rule. Like, you do not eat pasta <laughs> at a breakfast place. It's like going to IHOP and ordering fried fish. <laughs> I, I do not trust. No, I do not get seafood unless you are a seafood place. Yeah. Oh, it's bad, bad, bad. Kirk was my favorite character. Yes. 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 And I love just, I mean, again, for the people who watch the show, but how he just randomly pops up and he's like, no, I'm a mechanic now. No, yes. I've always worked here. And he's like, you've never been here, Kirk. And he's like, okay, but what about it then? <laughs> Kirk is a true millennial. He yeah. had every job. <laughs> he does everything. Yeah. He's an entrepreneur. I love it. And honestly, the best scenes with Kirk are always the ones with, with Luke. Just yeah. because those two are always at each other's throat. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. I think the last note that I had for episode, whoa, episode. I like went British there for a second. Um, the last episode, um, or the last note for episode five, was that Emily had warranted anger with Lorelai. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought that was, I don't know, like an interesting thing. One of my last notes is Michelle criticizes that cat wake, but that'd be ironic with later seasons. It's all I'm saying. I know, I know, I know, I know. Like Michelle, you you about to be a hypocrite in season seven? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, that I did have. I just found a note. Okay, this is kind of like a Dean, like kind of a Dean positive note. I was shocked. I was actually shocked and impressed that at the funeral when he, wait, maybe it wasn't that. It was episode six. 
I'll wait. Okay, so what I have right here. Maybe it was episode five. I have it in the five bucket, but now I'm not sure. Maybe it is, no. I think we get a, a lot, mm, maybe it's episode six, I think. Are you talking about the sneaking around? No, no, okay, so I think it was episode five. Because they have like similar scenes in episode five and six where it's like darkly lit and they're talking away from people. I think in episode five is when he comes up to her and is like, I have the feeling that you don't like me and you're not interested, so I'll back off. And actually I was like, okay, Dean, that's actually a very respectable. Yeah, he has, he has some, some redeemable quality. Yeah, so, so I was like, okay. Yeah, I just wrote course. down Max and Dean are really mirrors to each other. Hmm. Um, and I think a lot of that is represented with the way that they interact with both like Rory and Lorelai, because again, in this particular episode, we just see like Max like popping up like, hi, like isn't the date today? And being mm -hmm. like, but do you not want to? But do you want to? And I'm like, okay, this is reminding me a little bit of Dean right now, like a little bit of that forceful, like either, you know, either yeah. you want me here or you don't. Um, That's really interesting. And now I'm wondering if the girls like romantic lives mimic each other throughout the show. It it really does. And especially in episode six. Um, mm. I mean, if, if that was our last note for episode yeah. five, we can just jump into yeah. episode six. But in episode six, in that last scene where Dean is giving Rory her gift, that was with them sneaking around. That was truly a mirror of Lorelai mm -hmm. and Max sneaking around. So I, like you just said, I'm wondering if every relationship that they have on the show is like that or just this one. Because certain things that are happening with Lorelai are later happening with Rory as well. And then you're seeing how, like, she's learning from Lorelai's actions. Like, Lorelai's sneaking out with her teacher, and she, like, Rory also doesn't want Lorelai involved in her love life, so she's hiding it from her. So she's, like, subconsciously picking up on her mom's moves. Yeah? Yeah, that's super interesting. And also, I just, I wrote this down in all caps. Not Dean making her that bracelet. He really pulled the Jacob Black with that one from Twilight. <laughs> He's like, I made you this. Let me put it on you. And then creepily, like, it, like interlaces their hands. Uh -uh. No. And again, it's because he's a teenage boy. And again, maybe it's because I'm now an adult and I'm like, yeah. Oh. Like, that's not how it works anymore, honey. <laughs> <clears throat> the main thing that I have for sex is I'm constantly being reminded how much I love Emily. Mm hmm. And I think the way that they opened up the episode of the whole post-it note thing was so genius. funny. Like, yeah. genius. And then also, again, like, telling of the grandparents' personalities. Like, they obviously have all of these things and don't really seem to care for the stuff that they own. Yeah. They're owning amazing things, but they don't care for it because they're like, yeah, go around, throw a post-it note on it, whatever you want. Yeah. And I am going along with that, that scene where they're like shopping, like shopping. <laughs> what is going on with us, Mick? We're like shopping. <laughs> shopping. I don't know what's going on over here. Um, but when they went shopping for Rory, I think that was the first time that we truly get to see that Lorelai wants that relationship with her mom. Mm -hmm. Because when Lorelai goes back to the diner, and she's like, I had a great time because she actually listened to me. So even though she's trying to cope with all that negativity that her mom brings into her life, a very hidden part of her still yearns for that relationship to happen. And then we also see that later on with Richard. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we don't see a lot of, I think, in the show in general. I think we only get those small scenes where right. she's like, oh, like, I kind of want that, but I don't think it's happening at this point. Yeah, no. And I think we see that too in the beginning of the episode, even in that post-it note scene where Emily makes them pudding for dessert. And that was really like Emily showing, like, I do care about you. And I know you guys like pudding. And then even Laura like comments on it later to Suki, like, oh my gosh, you'd never believe that my mom made us pudding. And she's like, it's really showing that she's listening. 
So yeah, this episode really, again, we go back and forth between world A and world B, and we're really focused on the differences between how both of these people are going to treat Rory and then how they might start to treat each other. Yeah. And again, we get that not in my world, only in your world. Why? What do you want? Why do we get this? I think she only wants my food. She's like, give me some nuggets and some fries. Oh, I want some nuggets fries. and some fries. I'm still slowly working on my salad. <laughs> hey, what do you want? Anyway, I think she's going to, you know, don't want the microphone. <laughs> Girl. Anyway, um, again, we get that not in my world, only in your world. We get that a lot with Lorelai and Emily. Mm -hmm. uh, in that shopping scene when when Emily wants to get Rory that Mont Blanc pen and she's like that's not the type of gift that we give to like a 16 year old like, um, no. and I remember Nala oh my god no okay you're you're going back down honey she just um, wants to be a part of the show she just wants some nuggets she'd be a hypocrite yeah. trying to get up here and like steal the show and then eat my food um <laughs> But uh, I remember when I was younger and my dad had like this Mont Blanc pen because he was like, you know, uh, he was like a manager at like Caterpillar and everything. So he was like working for this big company and he's like, I need to get one to look professional. And then there's like 16 year old me like, I want one. And he's like, hell no. <laughs> he's like, hell no. I'm not buying a $300 pen. What is wrong with you? And then it's just it's just not the timing. And it just really shows the way that they grew up because they grew up very privileged, like Emily and Richard. Mm -hmm. And that's the only world that they know. Right. And they don't know that these things need to be earned. They don't know that these things, like Rory needs to work hard for them. They're just like wanting to hand her everything in like a silver, in like a silver platter. Right. Um, and that's not how Lorelai works with Rory. Yeah. No, yeah, I think, like, I really actually liked um, episode six. I didn't really take a lot of notes for this one because I think a lot of it was self-explanatory. Yeah. I mean, like, we go from world A to world B, and I'm almost wondering if, because we're doing this in, like, three episode increments, I'm wondering if this is how the pattern is because we had episode four was in, like, completely world B. Episode five was in world A, and now episode six is in between. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if it's a pattern that's going to continue but this one very clearly showed like we had a birthday party for Rory in world B which was awful and then we had the birthday party for Rory in world A which I really loved that Emily and Richard made an effort to come after they realized how upset Rory was yeah their party and we also get that first glimpse of, like that first glimpse of Paris giving Tristan that side eye she was like oh you cute uh-huh and you know what? I would have liked for that to happen. That would have been interesting. I wonder if it was going to, because like this episode clearly shows that it was an interest mm -hmm. but that Chad Michael Murray left to go on the OC or whatever show. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that was like supposed to happen down the line. I, I It's always <clears throat> intrigued me so much because it was set up. It just never happened. Mm -hmm. And I I would have liked to explore that, honestly. I just really empathize with Rory because I would have hated to show up at my birthday party and have, like, people that you hate from school be there. I could not imagine. Look, when I was younger, I mean, way younger, like, when I was in, like, first and second grade. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, when you're at that age, you already know who you like and who you don't like. But my mom always insisted on, you know, like inviting everyone, everyone in my class to the party. And I would walk in and there's like 60 people and I only like like two of them. And it's no. like, y'all, no, like, mom, you're paying for this ridiculous party. And like, I don't even like 5% of these people. <laughs> no, like we don't want it. Yeah. So I, I, I totally felt with Rory. The only other like major note that I had from episode six was this is <clears throat> a great moment where um, I believe it was Emily who kind of mentioned to Lorelai like, ooh, what about Luke? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. <clears throat> what episode is it? It's this episode. That little will you marry me joke. I'm like, 
look what you mm. what you're trying to look what you're trying to say he wants Luke knows what yeah. he wants yeah, yeah. He's a he what it wants also the iBook that just gave me war flashbacks <laughs> yes oh my god Nyla what's oh my god so I like that at least like now that I'm re-watching the show again, I'm seeing how much Luke is still such a constant. Oh yeah. Like, Lorelai's other relationships will come and go. And like, not only is he a constant as a friend, but he really is a constant as a love interest because like in the first couple episodes, Lorelai like poses the question jokingly to Rory, like what if I dated Luke? Like, ha ha. Yeah. Then, so you can see that it's on her mind. And then her mom is like, Oh, you could tell Luke's interested in you. And she's like, what are you saying? She's licking my elbow. What is, oh don't, try, don't try to lick the barbecue sauce. Yeah, I was like, she's in the nuggets are there. <laughs> oh my God, she honestly really do be intense right now. I love you, honey, but calm down, honey bun. Um, but yeah, I just, I think because Lorelai has always been single, Luke unconsciously has taken over like that dad-esque role, mm -hmm. like bringing the eyes and like, that scene where he leaves her like the cake and like the balloons at the table no. and it's just really cute like you can tell that even though he's really sarcastic and he's like deadpan most of the time he truly cares and that's like such a beautiful thing to see so early on right because it's just it's been it's been in the making that pining crow really do be playing a role there it really is 100 percent Okay, do you have any other like major notes for episode six? Something really silly. Kelly Bishop, who plays Emily, looks so similar to Susan Sarandon. <laughs> oh my God. Hold on, I'm actually looking at photos now. Then, because okay, so I, there was this scene when she is talking to Richard and he's like, I love you. Like you look so beautiful. And <laughs> when I looked for, like at her for, from her profile, I was like that, is that Susan Sarandon right now? Because I'm. And I, I love Susan Sarandon. I know. Also, she's it's Susan Sarandon season because it's October and Rocky Horror yes. Picture. But, like, yes. oh, wow, you are absolutely so right. Like, I saw that, and that just reminded me of Enchanted, that last scene in Enchanted. Yes. And I was like, they look so similar. Well, now I'm never going to be able to unsee that. I know. <laughs> I had to share. I had to share that. I can't be the only one that thinks that. Mm -mm. Okay. I think that's basically it, though. I agree. So I have like a couple pop culture references. Yes. So I think one of my favorite ones from all of these episodes was when. Um, ooh, there we go. Up on the screen, pop culture references. I know. Is when um, Lorelai <laughs> tells Rory, like, nothing is worse than you admitting that you liked Saved by the Bell. Oh, my God. I, that's, <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. hilarious. What a dig at Saved by the Bell. But I laugh so hard at that line. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's. By now, it's obvious, like, also all the rock star references, like Black Sabbath, Queen, mm -hmm. Pat Benatar. Um, mm -hmm. I, just love, I just love that because I grew up such a big fan of rock. Um, and again, that's so representative. Like, my mom was the one who introduced me to that. Yeah. So whenever I hear that on Gilmore Girls, I'm like, yes, give it to me. Yes. Every we single like, bit of it. I know. And we have, like, Lane who, like, comes over to rock out to music before she goes to school. Oh my god, yeah. And we have like Duella trying to play that on the harp, which is hysterical. Like I love it. I love every second of it, especially now because I mean we we all know the story of Queen, but now it's mm -hmm. Queen plus Adam Lambert. Yes. Like, I live for it honestly. I love Adam Lambert. And I love Queen so much. Queen. Yeah. Actually funny tidbit because I've been in musical theater for years now, mm -hmm. my school one year tried to do like a original musical, Romeo and Juliet retelling type situation, but with queen music, it was what? awesome. It was awesome, but it was canceled. <clears throat> 
but it was, we were in reverse. No. Everything, but was that was incredible. I know that first act ended with another one bites the dust and somebody being shot. And it was just intense. It was incredible. That honestly sounds incredible. I know. Which I mean, it also goes along the lines of like Shakespeare, you know, Queen, you know, yeah. that's 100 IQ be working right now. <laughs> I mean, we also get a reference for McDonald's, so very fitting. Very, very fitting. That's why you had to get some tonight. I know, I had to. And then B52, of course. Il Duce, like what? Oh. They just be mentioning Mussolini like casually. I know. <laughs> That was pretty good. That was like, I guess we didn't even talk about that scene. Oh my gosh. Where like Lorelai breaks down and goes for her kid. Like absolutely iconic and amazing. I know. I was like, did, did they just drop that? Like just so casually? Like, and I also I have mean, all, all the Nazi like Hitler references were just. Yeah, there was a lot. I know. In the episodes, which is I interesting. Know. I've never paid yeah. attention to it. <laughs> I loved um, that there was like a line where she was, I don't even, I don't think I wrote down who said it, where um, not all the time, like, are you attracted to someone by their looks? And like Angelina Jolie and like Billy Bob is proof of that. Okay. I didn't catch that one. No. Oh my gosh. Please Google Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob. <clears throat> I'm going to look that up. Because, yeah. <clears throat> okay. yeah, like they were absolutely like they were like one of the weirdest couples in Hollywood. Everybody was so confused. Oh my god, Billy Bob Thornton. Mm -mm. Oh. Mm hmm. Oh no. Mm hmm. That little beard situation. Uh uh. <laughs> she did that. It was bad. Yeah. So I thought it that is. was funny that they threw that in there. Yeah, I didn't catch that. So that's interesting. Was that, what episode was that, four? Or five? five? Okay. Five. And yeah. this, five, this was only around the time that they got, they got married, like when this season was going. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for episode five, I just have The Sixth Sense and M. Night Shyamalan. Yes, M. Night Shyamalan reference. Yes. Yeah. I have that one as well. Which I mean, I love The Sixth Sense. So, so that was a great reference by Lane. You know, Lane be dropping some of the best references in this show. She usually does. I feel like she's definitely yeah. our pop culture queen. Oh, yeah, 100%. And then I think it was Suki. Did she mention Jim Carrey? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm hmm I just had to write that down, too. Those were definitely, like, my favorite pop culture ones that I wrote down. Yeah. Because for episode six, um, we go again into, <clears throat> into symbolism with Henry Youngman, that he's famous for his one-liners. And so that's just really representative of some of the humor that we get on the show. Right. Um, which again, if people don't know, then they won't catch it. But I think it's a subtle hint in there that I particularly like. Um, what else do we have here? Lucy, I'm home. Yes, that's a good one. That's I know. I'm going to just put on my glasses real quick because your girl can't see. I'm um, <laughs> up here because I'm always worried about the glare. Yeah, I just, I have the ring light up there, so I don't think it'll, it'll do anything. Yeah, it should be good. You look good. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, and then I have, I mean, Freaky Friday, which is super ironic because Chad Michael Murray goes on to star in that in 2005. I love that foreshadowing. Um, yeah, and it was definitely not talking about the 2002 version, but rather the original. Mm-hmm. But... I that was some cool foreshadow right there. I don't even know if they expected it to happen. I know. <laughs> I don't know if they thought of it that way. I know. And then Barbara Streisand, just because she's an icon, I just I just Absolutely. wrote it down. Oh yeah, I do have that written down. The Barbara Streisand doing like another comeback show. So far. Yeah. But I don't know if you caught anything else because those are basically oh and Cinderella. That's about it from episode six. The no, I didn't catch anything else. I think you hit everything I had. 
Yeah. And honestly, I, I think we finally are getting, except Il Ducci, but <laughs> I think everything else aged very well. Yes. Yeah. Not compared to those three episodes, because those three episodes, we got some that were just not that cool. Not but, that cool. Not that cool. Not that cool. But I think this time around, we got some good ones. Yeah, I think that's all I have. If we want to hop into our books mentioned, the category will be super short today. Literally. <clears throat> Let me just type this. Just I'm, type having, I'm having so much fun with these banners. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that Rory mentions or really anybody mentions throughout the next three episodes is Shakespeare. We get a ton of Shakespeare mentioned throughout episode four because that's a test that Rory is studying for. Mm -hmm. And you know, I have no qualms with Shakespeare. You what? I have like no qualms with Shakespeare. I really like Shakespeare, whereas I feel like in the last episode we talked about some books that were mentioned, I was like, no. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, Shakespeare for me is fine. I mean, it was an, it was a cool experience in high school. Um, especially though, because our literature teacher was trying to make us do different stuff and mm -hmm. she made us do, she made us organize a play for Macbeth. Oh, and when I tell you that it was the most ridiculous thing ever <laughs> with like the witch scene. Yeah. I, mean, I have videos that I will send to you. Please. Because, I mean, of course, yeah. I live in Panama. This is Central America. English is not the first language. Mm -hmm. And you should have seen some of my classmates who barely spoke English. And they were just screaming like, the witch is my perron. And it was the funniest <laughs> thing ever. And they were like using like brooms. I, oh, my God. No. Oh, my gosh. I need to see this. That is amazing. I will send it to you. And on top of that, like our classrooms had like these big windows. And we had like some metal poles like stuck so that they couldn't open the windows. Mm -hmm. And so people literally grabbed those and took those out and used those as swords. Oh my and god, amazing. Like it was and nobody prepared. Like that was all impromptu. Like people were just pulling oh. dialogue out of their just no. That's even better. Absolute chaos. Like I need to send you those videos. <laughs> See, I love Shakespeare still because I like there's so many retellings of Shakespeare. Like oh. I read Foul is Fair by Hannah Kappen, who I need to read that. So good. It's like the revenge plot. That's a Macbeth retelling. Maybe mm -hmm. not as amazing as your high school uh, play version. <laughs> but then also, like, yeah, I just feel like Shakespeare definitely deserves to be classics, whereas others I don't necessarily oh, yeah. agree with. Just because, like, the stories that Shakespeare tells are woven into so many modern stories now. Yeah. One, of course, being um, the best, one of the best movies of all time. She is the man. Um, oh, my God. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. Because people be fighting me about that movie, and I love it. I love it. It's absolutely, like, it's a work of cinematic, like, art. Thank you. It's art. Honestly, now, okay, maybe we need to do, like, some Netflix lives of, like, <laughs> yes. all of those really great, like, teen movies, because She is the Man is top tier. Honestly, yeah. I agree with you 100%. And not only that, but I'm just going to mention this real quick because I know there is a Romeo and Juliet retelling coming out in November, which, which is These Violent Delights by yes. Chloe, Chloe Gong. Yes. Am, yeah, which is set in like Shanghai and it's just diverse and inclusive and we love to see it. And I just, I like, like you just said, I love when authors grab these classical mm -hmm. just revolutionary stories and then they retell them and just warp them in their own way and it works. And I've heard people say great things about these violent delights for the people who've read the arc. So I pre ordered it. I'm on like the little street team. Oh, I'm super excited. Like it's definitely one of my anticipated reads for 2020. And I love that she is so young. Chloe Gong is super young, already getting published. I love to see that. So I cannot wait to read it, support her. And don't we all love a Romeo and Juliet retelling? Honestly, sidebar real quick, but 
the talent in these Asian authors is insane. Yes. Like RF Quang wrote the poppy worm when she was 19, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of shocked at like the ability to write these just incredible books at that age, because at that age, I was certainly not writing like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I'm just saying props to them. Yeah, they deserve all the love in the world. younger than me. So, yeah. Like that, I'm always like, oh my God, like I love that for all of you. And then you're making me have panic about my own life. <laughs> Honestly, I just, I love to see it and I love to see work like this published because it deserves to be published and it yes. deserves to be loved. And I just, honestly, just plugging this new generation of booktubers, but honestly, we be pulling through with these diverse reads and promoting them because... I agree. I feel like it's only what they deserve. I feel like BookTube, book Twitter, and book bloggers really have like pushed so many diverse books this year and they've all been amazing yeah also, i know that you're reading mexican gothic please give me like a play-by-play -play once you start reading that because oh i think it's so good and i cannot wait to hear your thoughts oh my god okay so i was gonna read it by myself and then today in molly's live stream deja was like let's buddy read it yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Yes, because if it's spooky, I need somebody to read it with me. I, again, like, don't like horror, but it's more atmospheric. Spooky. Okay. And it has, like, the Get Out vibes if you watch oh. Get Out. Yeah. And definitely, yeah, it's more like the atmosphere okay. and, like, creepy families. But it is so good. They have, there they go again. I <laughs> hear them. Yes. I cannot right now, but yeah, um, Shakespeare, we love to see it. Mm -hmm. That's great. I have no complaints about that one. Mm -mm. We're jumping into best lines, y'all. It's what I want to see. This is, I want to see which best one part. goes down. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, I have too many. I think I'm always going to have too many for this section, but... Actually, I was selective this time, and I think I only have, like, two per episode. Oh, okay. Okay. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. like, so you can start. Gaps. <laughs> the first one that I has, has, oh, my gosh. We are. What is wrong with us, Mick? We cannot talk fading. today. We are fading. Can't talk today. Um, the first one that I have is, I wonder if Versace makes a pacifier. <laughs> How I... did I catch that? lost my mind. That was one of the funniest lines I've ever heard um, because I'm pretty sure it was between Michelle and um, it was it between Michelle and Druella? Something like that. And yeah, oh, they said, I wonder if Versace makes a pacifier to like get you yeah, to Yeah, because like, they were fighting. Yes, and I was like, that is so good. That's so good. Yeah. And then I think another one that I have um, from episode four is when Lorelai swears in front of the parent-teacher conference, and yeah. she says, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, and the camel, which I've never heard in my life, and I need to start using that. Oh, that was so funny. So funny. Yeah, for episode four, I have, in theaters now, the thing that thinks and that reads a lot. Yes, yes, so good. I love that one. And then just, okay, so this one has a backstory because I know exactly what she means. So when I was in sixth grade, no, actually, that's not the one. When I was in 11th grade, I just lost my mind and I gained a lot of weight, right? Mm -hmm. And since I'm tiny, I can't really afford to do that. And so I was like, mom, it's about time. Like I need to go to a nutritionist because I need to learn how to eat. Mm -hmm. and so all of my snacks were always like rice cakes <laughs> and like rice cakes and like protein shakes and like peanut butter. Oh, and peanut then Rory asks Lane, what is that? And Lane just says 12 calories. <laughs> I get that so much because when I was, I mean, I like rice cakes, like don't get me wrong. And for some reason we got <laughs> ones and they don't, like they don't have them anymore here. 
but they have like some strawberry type thing on top. When I tell you that was good, and like the three rice cakes were like, I don't know, like how, mm, like maybe 30 grams of like carbs and like not that many. It was great. I was having the best time. I love them rice cakes. <laughs> no, I love that. And then like Rory just hands her like, it was like a Snickers bar or something. <laughs> like here, and Lane's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Yeah, and then Lane's mom comes and, and she's like, what is that? And that's like, she's, that, that's mine, that's mine, that's yeah, not sorry, Lane. Sorry, sorry. That was me when I was younger. Whenever my friends would come over and we would order pizza, my mom's like, what's that? And I'm like, that's not mine, mom, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> not me, not me. Not me, mom, I promise. I'm, I'm being good. <laughs> um, another one that I had from episode four was when Lorelai's like, oh, can we come, like, do the test and then that um like parent is like why like that's so boring why would you want to watch them take a text and she goes do you play golf like you explain yours and i'll explain mine <laughs> i thought that line was so good that parent teacher conference was just hilarious i love mm -hmm. that thing. why are you snipping me you ain't gonna get any nuggets <laughs> not happening nala calm down um, I don't have any more for episode two because again, episode two. <laughs> what? Episode four. Episode four? My, brain, my, my brain just went not today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, for episode five though, I <laughs> that scene when they're when they're discussing like the cousin dying, and Emily's like, I don't think Claudia's planning to die a second time. I have that one too. <laughs> And I'm like, Emily really do be cracking them jokes, though. I know. I was like, Emily really is getting funny. She's getting funny. I know. I love her. And then Kirk, the next time you put something in your mouth that doesn't belong there, I'm going to remove it and call the police. And Miss Patty's face when he says that is like... Yeah, she's downright traumatized. She's like, what's this kid saying? Mm hmm I love it. I love Kirk so much. Damn. I have the line from this episode when the French people do come to the inn. And Michelle's trying to be like, I, like, in his French, thick back accent, like, I'm, yeah. not French. I'm not French. And he just goes, I'm just a small country boy from Texas. And, like, yeah. he's like, I'm <laughs> Michelle. He's downright, like, I'm not French. I'm right. just kind of off from Texas. And they think, whoa. What you wait, wait, honey? It was so good. You're not fooling anyone. Mm -hmm. I love Michelle. Oh my god. And then I have another like best. It's really just like best scene from episode five where the writing was good. Okay. When it's Lorelai and Suki are at Luke's diner and Lorelai. Oh, I love that scene out. so much. Yes. It's so good. And like Lorelai's talking about, you know, Mr. Medina and if she should do it. And then she goes, and it would be great to, you know, as in like, have sex with him. And Suki's like, I don't know. And Lorelai's like, no, you know, and I know, and even he knows. And then the random guy next to her is like, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, I know. Give you some nuggets. You better not bother me anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh. She just wants some nuggets. I just gave her a little bit. <laughs> so you better calm down. She be, she's being intense right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I love that scene. The guy just randomly to go, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. I love, I love it. it. Oh my cat just cried to come in again. So we have so we have him here. Oh, Those are really all the best lines that I have. Yeah, I have for episode six, I have when they're shopping for Rory's gift. And Emily is like, oh, this is cute. Do you, do you think this is cute? And then she's like, oh, no, it's $12. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, what? Like, that's a gift, Emily. Doesn't matter how much it is. No. Oh, my God. And then <laughs> I love this quote, too, from, like, the end of episode six when Richard finishes, like, the magazine. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, so proud. Takes his glasses off. Like, I am an autumn. <laughs> 
I love him so much. <laughs> I think too, like Richard really doesn't get a lot of screen time. No. But when he does, like they really are really funny moments. Yeah. And then just this line, it broke my heart from Emily. She's right. I don't know my daughter at all. Mm -hmm. I know. Hit me right in the feels. Right in the feels. That's all I have for my best lines. Same. If you want to go to, if you have like one quick writing takeaway, I know that we talked in the beginning, like these episodes weren't, I don't know, like they just weren't as jam packed with writing takeaways as episodes one through three were. So we just kind of had like some quick notes. Yeah, even like at, at the beginning, I was trying to also see like what scenes we could break down. Mm -hmm. But even then, like I don't, I don't really have any like as in depth as we had for episodes one through three. I agree. I think what I have is just parallels, like Rory receiving mm -hmm. the gift from Dean and they're sneaking around and that's just a parallel to Max and Lorelai. But beside that, it was really hard to find one. So definitely we can jump into writer takeaway. So if you wanna start. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> Let me try to wrap up one quick writer takeaway. Yeah. I think one thing, like speaking of parallels, there was a lot going on in all of these episodes, and that is a good way to have a sub, like a side plot, subplot going on that really reflects and kind of increases like the theme or the lesson you're learning in the main plot. Yeah. Episode five with cinnamon passing and like so sad but, like Babs and Lorelai were having that conversation and really what they were talking about like had Lorelai open up her own mind what was going on with her trying to struggle with Max and figure everything out and so like that was a really good use of the subplot helping to converge with the main plot and really illuminate that. So I think using those subplots are super important. Like that's all we really saw in episode four, five, and six is so many subplots. So making sure that at least either again, like mimic the main storyline, show us something about the main storyline, or they should be like neatly wrapped up. Like yeah. you know, start, middle, end completely done so we have like no questions lingering about like the storylines like one storyline that was completely wrapped up was like that magic risotto yeah. yeah it wasn't just suki stressed about the magic risotto and then nothing else like we got a wrap up i'll be a creepy one because she went to the guy's house but, like, yeah, yeah. right but she got a wrap up because she got the answer that she wanted so like always to just make sure that your subplots are those should be like completely tied up with a bow yeah, no, I agree because when you when you look at books, you have like that main plot, whether it's a coming of age story or whether it's, you know, in, in fantasy, that character trying to, you know, build this new world and save the day, whatever it is, you have some plot <laughs> like romance or familial conflicts and mm -hmm. it just adds a lot of conflict to the story and also a lot of depth to the characters. So definitely nailing down those soft plots is really important, but also letting them go full circle. Because if you leave them out in the open, that about to leave some readers mad. Yes. Because I I experienced that yesterday. <laughs> it's all oh, I'm no. saying. Oh no, oh <laughs> no. That's all I'm saying. So <laughs> for me, I'm trying to open all of these because I, I think the one I wrote was for episode four. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, so yeah, what I wrote was number one, nail down the two worlds in your book because the entire novel is going to center around those differences mm -hmm. because you need the character to be thrust from world A to world B and they need to flounder, they need to not be succeeding or succeeding and getting that false sense of victory or defeat in right. order for them to get that universal lesson. So I would just say, really know your world, really know if you're writing fantasy, your magic system, really know which tropes you want to use 
and figure out the best way to do it because every trope has been used, right? So it's not like anyone's going to do something 100% innovative and different, but if you can figure out a way to use what's already been used in a way that could be groundbreaking, now that I would love to see. Yeah. So I think those are like my main two things, but also on episode four, I just wrote a lot about fun and games and the mm. bad guy closes in because again, those two are parallels, right? So in fun and games, we see that first glimpse almost at the main character in that new world. And so we need to see them and you need to choose one because both yes. cannot happen. You can either make them succeed or you can either make them fail at whatever they're doing. So really decide what you want to do in that fun and games section, because when the bad guy closes in, that needs to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. So if they're succeeding in fun and games, they need to be floundering in bad guy closes in and vice versa. Right. So I feel like all of that goes in hand in hand. And I think that was my main thing. And I wrote those because to me, and I know TV shows work very differently because they don't use the same amount of plot beats as a book. Mm -hmm. But still, to me, that entire, like, these three episodes were so muddled in those two sections. Yeah, I agree. That I, just, that I just really couldn't figure out when one thing started and ended. Yeah, completely and agree. So, yeah, I think that would be my writer takeaways. I love it. Yeah. Well, I'm honestly proud of us for getting through all of this in um, not three hours like we did last time. So honestly, I just think because we pre-recorded and we were like chatting in between and going to big tangents, which I mean, it was fun because we got to know each other for the first time, like, yeah, so you know, true. 101. But I think definitely time management on a live stream goes way better <laughs> than pre-recording. Look at us managing our time. I know, especially because my computer is like 500 gigabytes. So if I would have had to download a file that's 400 and already I have like 150 taken, my computer would have just crashed. No, it would have. Trust me, mine was going so slow. I was like, oh, no, we need to do this live from now on because I've never seen a file yeah. that in my life. That when you told me 188, I was like, make just typo. No, no, no. And then you were like, oh no, 188. Okay. It was like, bad. Oh. Wow. But then I remembered when I screen record my computer, three minutes is 300 megabytes. So mm -hmm. I believe you. <laughs> yes. And we had three hours of content. We did. My cat is like, he's literally just. He's just chilling on me. I love Mochi. <laughs> I, literally, I literally just switched positions. And she was like, oh, you're talking to me? And she's just right yeah. here. But because she's tiny, you can't see her. What? Yeah, and Mochi's like falling asleep right now. <laughs> I love Mochi so much. The okay. best. Well, hopefully we pick some storyline back up into the yeah. next couple episodes. So... Let's just hold on for hope there. And, you know, I'm sure we'll be talking about Dean again in the next episode. I mean, honestly, I'm just thinking right now, like maybe for like after we do that mid-season finale situation, we mm -hmm. could like sneak in like a movie or something and then carry on with the rest of the show. I like it. I like because it. Because... I need to just dissect everything. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, I need the show to just pick back on and give me, give me, like Manda would say, give me some juice. Give me yes, some, give me some juice. juice. Give me give something. Me, give me something. I agree. Well, this was great. I'm really sad. Next time I actually need to get takeout and not like a sad salad, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm eyeing the nuggets. Maybe I need to get McDonald's next time we do this. Honestly? Yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah. It literally got here, and I just disinfected everything. I took it out, put it on a plate, because I'm too paranoid to eat it straight out of the bag. Yeah. Understandable. Threw everything away. And then the reason why it took so long, 
I dropped the entire thing of Clorox on the floor oh. and I had to scoop that up and clean that up <laughs> because I am chaos and disaster must reign <laughs> in this household. But there's just no other Always. way. The universe be conspiring against me. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it is. Honestly, yeah. But well, yeah, I'm glad again, I cannot say this enough to be doing this with you. And thank you for everyone who joined, for everyone who interacted. If you're watching this after we finish the live stream, thank you so much. And leave a comment down below about anything we said. We want to hear all of your thoughts about Gilmore Girls. Honestly, we need to chat in the comments. I need to hear if this is your first time watching. Because if it is, I want to hear your first thoughts and your theories about like what's going to happen. I know. And I feel like we should like bring somebody on like a show of like this is their first time i want to hear like we need some guests i want to hear some like interesting reactions to gilmore girls i know i know darian loves it so maybe darian could be one yes. darian could be like a long-standing like lover of the show cheyenne said that she was trying to watch it so maybe she could come on and give her like new yes. Yes. I love it. So yeah, definitely comment down below. Again, all of Mick's links are down below. So you can go subscribe to her, follow her <laughs> everywhere because she'd be making some bomb ass content that I'm sure you do not want to miss. And yeah. You guys are all subscribed to Mel because she is a queen and she's over here. So subscribe to Mel because she is a queen and we're on her channel right now. And I'm always hyping her stuff up because she's amazing. Thank you. I'm honestly, I was happy because I could put on makeup on my eyes today. That's all I'm saying. I love that. <laughs> I look like a gremlin today, but. I mean, it's fine. I was just taking advantage of the fact that my eye is okay because mm -hmm. makeup was not happening towards the beginning of the week. Uh -uh. <laughs> so, so yeah, again, thank you all for joining. This was incredible. incredible. And Tune in next Sunday on Mixed Channel for episode seven through 10. Oh my God. Nine. Nine? Oh yeah, oops, I don't know basic math. I know, I keep doing that too, but I'm like, not how math works. I hate math, seven through nine. Yeah, cause I'm like, okay, seven through 10, that's like right, three, that's three. Right? <laughs> Yeah, but I'm like, no, seven, eight, nine, okay. Seven, eight, nine, right, 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 yes. So, 789 on Mixed Channel next Sunday. Yeah. So definitely tune in. And we have a coffee. Before I forget, we have a coffee and takeout Twitter now. Yeah. So I will link that down below so everyone can go follow it because we will be giving you constant updates through Twitter. And I think that's basically it. Mick, I don't know if you want to say anything else. Sounds good. Hope to see you guys next week on my channel with some coffee or takeout. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm honestly, I honestly don't know what I'm having next week, but I'm excited. Yes. I'm, I need to prepare better for next week's food. <laughs> I agree. I agree. But yeah, thank you all. And we will see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>